Hi, I'm Johannes. I'm from the Department of Cultural and Linguistic Evolution at MPI AVA in Leipzig. And I want to talk about a project that I have been working on recently, uh, which is a database catalog or a meta database. Basically, it's a database about databases. Um, and I find, I try to find research data that's been published in the CDF format. And then I collect metadata. So like what kind of data is in there, DOI, stuff like that. And also I look directly into the data and uh, look what languages the data set is referring to. Um, how many data points are there? Uh, how many word forms? How many examples? Stuff like that. And also I map these languages to Glotto codes if possible so that you can ask like cross database questions like uh, what databases does a certain language appear in, um, how many data sets are there about a the language, um, uh, what kind of data have we more of, what kind of data have we less of, stuff like that. Um, why am I making this? Basically the um, there's more and more CDF data sets that are being made and these data sets are being made with them in a very decentralized way. People just uh, take the tools and make CDF data. Um, so it's hard to tell, hard to give like to get like a bird's eye view of what is there, what isn't there. Um, the problem is also that we upload these uh, data sets to uh, like repositories like Zenodo, and they cannot really provide this kind of bird's eye view because they're, they're well, for one, they're busy. Uh, and another problem is that they're serving a, a multitude of different fields and each field would need its own metadata. So they either would have to maintain that on their end, which they probably won't, or if they would add metadata, then the, this is something that the data uploader has to create and also to maintain and keep up to date is something that people aren't really good at. Uh, so that's why I'm just making a separate project where I collect this metadata and then put it into one place. Um, um, this, this catalog is created by first searching the node of 4CDF datasets then downloading some metadata that the node provides and then downloading the data and looking at it. Um, and then opening the data set and then reading and reading it and counting all the things and then assemble this into a, a database as a CAF data set so that can be further uh, be further processing. Now how do we find data? Uh, I basically hook into the Nodos APIs and uh, have them to give me a list of records on it. Um, I filter these mostly by tags. They're called communities. They're tags. Um, and I use tags that are known for having CDF data in them. Um, also, if a data set has more than one tags, also uh, let the program give me a list so I can see if these other tags are also helpful. And also, I filter out stuff that is seems to obviously not be data at all, or like CDF data, like there's people upload software programs to Zenodo, or articles, slides, Excel spreadsheets, stuff like that. Um, and also I go in and there are some projects that I just manual, like manually blacklist, because if I'm counting like lot of codes, then um, getting like including Glot Glotolog wouldn't make any sense. It's like, is this uh, Glotolog code in Glotolog? Well, yes, <laughs> they are making the Glotolog codes. So, um, and for the metadata, there's two things. For one, some of very general metadata is available from Zenodo, like author, who's the author, uh, who's the uploader. I, uh, license information, DOIs, um, links to GitHub, stuff like that, which is 
good. Um, but for anything else, there's only one way to know, which is to literally download all CDF data sets uh, that I know of and then look through them. So if you look at my downloads folder, whip, there we go. Uh, it's approaching like 17 gigs right now. Yeah, but that's what you have to do. Um, uh, and also you have to save it for a while because you don't want to re-download information all the time because then the Nola will be, well, they put some strain into that, into that service that they don't really want or need. Yeah. And then, as you can see, I created a CDF bench project, which is basically a Python script that reads out all the data and the downloaded data and then generates the CDF data set. Um, and I will eventually publish this data set on GitHub and the Nodo, which means I have to uh, actually kind of, I will have to black, blacklist myself because my uh, own data is, well, not that useful. It's similar to how Plot2Log isn't useful in this case. Um, so that's the thing. Now, what do I have so far? Um, the, this folder you just saw contains 409 Zenodo records. Although that doesn't exactly map to projects, because if you have like a project that gets updated uh, and releases new versions, then each version will be a separate record. And um, I, because it has to be, because you get a separate download link, you get a separate DOI. That's the whole point of the, of the exercise. So. Um, but that does mean that several projects will be counted multiple times. And you kind of have to, because the number of languages or the number of values obviously differs between the versions. Uh, sometimes things are removed or added. So, and usually like a record has like one CDF data set in it. Some have two, maybe three and in, like, within the same zip file. And then there's one that for some reason has like 1400 of them, which is probably they're all really small, just like one language or something. It is what it is. <laughs> Uh, and, and all of these data sets, I now have on record like 8,000 distinct Glotto codes, which could be languages, could be dialects, families, whatever a data, whatever could have a data point. Um, so I just for funsies plotted this number on the map. Um, I mean, I guess you probably would have to do more stuff to it to make it more, more, I guess more usable, but it's, it's just like a rough overview. I think this is kind of fun. Um, and as you can see, nothing too surprising. The data sets are uh, talking about languages across all across the world. Uh, some reasons are more sparse, which are like North Africa or Siberia, which makes sense. Um, some are more dense uh, and have more data, probably for cultural reasons, like there are more people working on Europe, so Europe has more dark spots for more data sets. Um, Caucasus has a lot of people working on it. Uh, Oceania, and, um, Northern, and Northern South America. So, um, yeah. Also, what you can do with this is, for instance, look at how many, specifically how many data sets a language has. For instance, I just uh, gave a table with like the most common uh, languages in the data set, like oh, natural English, lots of people work on English, Dutch, uh, Mandarin. Uh, and also just to see the, the advantage of having like a CDF data set, just did a thing that isn't part of my data set, which is like looking at language families. And this, I, in this uh, case, I just took like the CDF version of the Glottolog data and used that as 
to say like what language uh, uh, what family a language belongs to which is obviously uh, like language families are a moving target so this isn't like truth <laughs> if you will but uh, at least what you can say see is like you can just take it and then combine it with other data sets and uh, find out that apparently Sino-Tibetan has the most like Sino Tibetan languages have the most entries across databases. Oh no, uh, uh, more databases are, have Sino Tibetan languages in them than any other, followed by the European. So um, now types of datasets. This is uh, there's there's a bit there things are a bit lopsided. Um, there's massively more word lists than anything else. And this is like, even if you collapse all the 1400 uh, word lists from that one data set into one, you will still get 500 word lists um, uh, that are or 300 or 350 word lists, which is still an order of magnitude above anything else. Um, and if you look at the and plot them, then you get just the, the word lists, and you get a similar map, obviously. Um, but there aren't that many dictionaries. This is literally just a map of the, the Dictionaria project. And it's actually kind of interesting if you think about it. Like, word lists basically uh, ask what uh, form corresponds to a certain meaning, and dictionaries ask what uh, meaning description a word has, and they're like very similar, and they both result in like this pair of uh, form and meaning, but there's this difference in uh, how many are being made. Um, yeah. And we have been thinking about how we could combine the two and make like uh, things that are at, uh, at the same time a dictionary and a word list kind of feed the two sides from each other. And yeah, structured data sets, there's just like walls and stuff, and stuff like that. There's more of them, and there's less of them, this way around, there's less of them, but yeah. For whatever reason, I don't have any parallel corpora in my data set. Maybe I haven't, just haven't come across them. Um, yeah. So. What is there left to do? Uh, I need to obviously, on the input side, I need more data. So I need to move forward, more fine-grained ways to find CDF data on Suffix and Auto. Uh, I need more accurate ways to stuff, uh, to, to count things, to, uh, like for instance, there's hybrid data sets that are like, as I said, like a word list and a dictionary and one, or like a structured data set and a word list and one. And they are only counted as one thing, and we could probably have stuff like hazard, uh, or whether or not it has a value table and stuff like that. Um, and also in the long term, it might be good to see if we could include other repositories. And you notice the one that we use, so that's what I'm focusing on. But you could download the data from anywhere because it's all CDF in the end. Uh, also, we could create more links. Could, for instance, scan the data and then count references to like Concepticon for like, uh, concepts and for to the, the CITS. Um, yeah, and we can look more closely at the rest just between data sets. We have some have overlapping data, uh, some are compiled from other data sets, like collections, and then there's stuff like Lexicon Analyzed, which analyzes uh, other which downloads and analyzes all the data sets and creates data that way. Um, and these kind of relationships uh, with them need to be, should be added as well, I think. It would be useful. And on the, the downstream side, um, I guess all on the to-do list is like something, a browser web app where you can just look at the data and also uh, to tie the data directly into Plotalog. That was also an idea because you have like these feature matrices that you can use and you can also just make, is it in a data set or has a data set or how many data them can make that one, uh, one parameter to look at. 
So yeah, that's that's it for me. Uh, yeah. Thank you for your attention.